Thrive World Convert. Now, talking about healthcare for inside Robodon, Nigeria, we know say, a lot of people, they complain, say, it is very hard for you to access healthcare for Nigeria. Now, imagine a group of people where they decide to say, yes, in as much as it is hard for some people um, to access healthcare, make we enter inside Robodon, Nigeria and give them um, some kind benefits especially on how to make their body day very casual. And that's now why I get these um, casual people inside the house. And join me, welcome, Dr. Intin Shah, um, an osteologist. Um, good to have you in the house. Thank you for Thank coming. You. We have Dr. Ude Shah, um, dentist. Thank, Thank you, you for coming. Thank you so and much. we have, it's not a doctor, it's a Mr. <laughs> Mr. Roshet Ablu, founder of um, Aka Foundation. Thank, Thank you so you. much for coming. Thank you. All right. So first of all, just tell me, what have you been on a mission for Nigeria? Uh, <clears throat> this is our second mission. We were here last year also in uh, Euro. And uh, our mission is this year to help people with their medical conditions, okay. uh, do dental procedures if they need, give them free eyeglasses, and lastly, operate on an outpatient-based surgery <laughs> that we can do in some patients. And uh, this mission was started by Dr. Ampon Esiet, uh, who heads the Global Image Foundation. Okay. She's actually a Nigerian and a Miss Africa of 2007. Wow. Um, yeah, and now in America. She's a queen. That's correct. And now she's in uh, <coughs> Los Angeles, okay. and she's doing anesthesia residency. That's how she met me, uh, as I'm a professor of anesthesiology at Loma Linda University. And she wanted to do something for her country. And uh, last year, we came for the first time. Mm. And this year, we are here for the second time. And this year, we are also joined by Carebridge Foundation, Miss Ini Moran. Okay. She's a pharmacist. And then we have a team of uh, general practitioners, uh, anesthesia team, and dentists. And Dr. Uday Shah, who is leading the team of dentists, is here with us. I like that. I like the fact that you know, they give free eyeglasses and uh, even free um, eye examination to a lot of Nigerians. Very nice one. But let me speak with Dr. Ude Shah. Uh, you know, you're a dentist. Yes. Is this your first time or second time in Nigeria? First time. First I time in Nigeria. It, uh, and first time in Africa, even. Oh. I've never been to any African country. This okay. is the first time. All right. Now, coming into Nigeria, mm -hmm. what would be the impression we get as regards to our attitude to dental care? I think so. They need a lot more awareness because people are not aware of dental health. Mm. So starting from the school, if we educate them and make them aware of the dental health, it will give a bigger result, a better result. I like that. Now, coming into Nigeria now and taking this, and also now don't start already. Um, you started this particular movement already, right? Right. So how many people you don't actually meet to tell them more about their teeth? Uh, in four days, yes, we have figured four days we treated close to 300 patients. Wow. This is, we're talking about pr uh, procedures, and I think so 100 more we have done a diagnosis. We could not make because of the time restriction. But I think so it is very important that if we give better education about dental. So what will be your observation with the over 300 patients where you don't actually meet? What's your observation? Observation is... People have a poor oral hygiene because they probably cannot afford to go to the dentist. Mm. And also because of lack of education, how to take care of the teeth, it is having a problem also. Mm. So how can we take care of our teeth? Teeth, it's very interesting. <laughs> you mentioned, you're asking me. Just a couple of days ago at Rotary Club, I've given a, about five, seven minutes uh, speech. Okay. And if you want to take care of the teeth, I created a four rules for my patients. Rule number one, you have to rinse your mouth after every time you eat. Oh, so if any time I eat, I suppose rinse my mouth. Because when you eat, you don't swallow all the food particles. There are some food particles stays in your mouth because of the saliva. Saliva act as a glue and sticks the food particles to your gums and teeth. So when you rinse them out, they will be gone because if you leave them, your mouth has lots of bacteria. Mm. They eat them they grow mm. and damage your tissue, mm. which is your teeth and gums. Okay. Rule number two, you have to learn from your dentist how to brush and floss your teeth. Because most of the people don't know. Even in America, they don't know. I have to teach my patients so in their mouth. There's a way you have to brush your teeth. The correct way to brush your teeth, <laughs> I have to show you in your mouth. Like, you cannot do. I thought it was 
was just no that's not the right way so reason you have to learn this technique is because bacteria are not visible with our naked eyes so when you brush your teeth do you know you remove the bacteria or not you don't know so when we teach the technique which is what angle to keep the brush how many stroke to give how much pressure to give all those technique scientific technique we teach our patient once they learn this technique they are able to remove this plaque or bacteria more efficiently because bacteria is the cause of all the gum disease cavities or all the oral diseases comes from bacteria mm -hmm. rule number 3 you have to brush your teeth and floss your teeth every night before you go to bed mm. if you don't do that food particles and plaque and bacteria stay all night and you don't have any activity in the mouth you don't eat you don't drink you don't rinse you don't talk and on top of that you don't have a saliva flow yeah. when you are sleeping so when you don't have any activities what's going to happen to bacteria nobody bothers them they will have picnic all night <laughs> they will have party all night in your mouth mm. and they can grow easily and can damage your tissue so your more damage happens at the night time not during the day time oh. so it's good to brush your teeth before <clears> you sleep before you go to bed and my fourth and rule one. is any drinks you drink whether it is a tea coffee soda juice energy drinks any sports drink all of them are acidic in nature if you take longer time to finish them that means acid stay on your teeth for longer time and can do more damage so you have to finish them within 7 minutes because up to 7 minutes there is no damage after 7 minutes the damage starts wow and damage to your teeth are two number one is a direct damage of acid on the tooth and the second one is bacteria need acidic environment to grow so you're providing them a favorable environment so they grow faster and can cause more damage to your teeth hmm. thank you so much for that sir very, very 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 insightful now let me speak with uh, mr uh, rosheth ablu tell us more about the aka foundation so um, the aka foundation is about 3 4 years old uh, okay. we have been here in nigeria for about 8 9 years oh 9 8 uh, 9 years yes wow You're in Nigeria uh, already now. <laughs> um, I learned small, small. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, but I think what's very important is that we, uh, along with uh, a lot of like-minded people, Rotary Club, and uh, with some other organizations, we actually uh, do close to about a thousand cataract surgeries every year. Uh, there is a Gita Ashram. There is an Indian temple. We actually work with them uh, to be able to provide cataract surgeries uh, both in Lagos as well as in in Kano, and we do it. Uh, twice in a year about a thousand numbers in all uh, we work with uh, the rotary club and we actually uh, go to corporates collect pints of blood uh, from individuals and give it to the lagos state uh, transfusion commission so that they can actually give it to people when it needs so this year we have collected about a thousand pints of blood wow uh, we do uh, along with the tolaram foundation we actually provide artificial limbs to uh, people in need uh, we also do along with tolaram foundation we actually do a lot of vocational training and try and get people back onto jobs so that's what we are trying to do at this point in time i'm talking about the eye the eye they very very delicate and we need to actually take care of them but we don't in recent times not they since say a lot of nigerians are going blind because they know they take care of their eye where is there a tips like the tips where um Dr. Sher um would that share does give us is there a tips where you feel actually go through or follow to I, take up your eye I think the, the my understanding is the the problem is two or three fold number one is that there is the water the quality of water that is available is not very good so we actually have stopped like earlier we would take water and wash our face <clears throat> we don't do it now oh, the really? amount of time we spend with water on our eyes is less and so we don't the the like oral hygiene there is basic hygiene is required for your eyes as well okay. so you need to be able to wash them regularly use good water to wash it and things like that number 2 we are um, we are exposed to the sun many of us mm. are exposed to the sun our work is hard labor and so it takes a lot on our on you know the strain is too much on our eyes the problem the third thing is that a lot of people are turning bl uh, towards blindness is purely because a lot of us have blood glaucoma issues yes and glaucoma is something which is 
I don't know whether it cannot be treated, but it is certainly very difficult to treat. So you can actually, you can actually stop further losing sight, but you cannot undo what you have done. And the problem with glaucoma is the next generation is surely to get impacted. So you need to be able to go back and teach them techniques right now so that they are not going on the same path. Yeah, I like that. Now, glaucoma is something way um, they are very hard to treat as we don't get different doctors coming in here to tell us. So if they're very good, say you detect them early because it can be managed. Now, talking about this particular altitude and the difference I will go to Nigeria, how can Nigerians benefit from them? Is there a particular place where we're not there? Is there somewhere that you are that Nigerians can come in to benefit from this particular medical examination? Um, if I may first add to the uh, eyes. eyes. I think uh, cataract is number one problem as we grow older. Okay. And it's not that difficult to do that surgery. Okay. As uh, we learned that Rotary Club has been doing about 1,000 a year. Uh -huh. um, I have gone to... 13 other countries besides Nigeria, and in some of the countries we have done these surgical procedures. We can certainly do more of that. Okay. When it comes to glaucoma, there is simpler treatment with medicine. Only thing is, you need to have eye doctors available to check and then advise you based mm. on that. So that's the second cause. And the third is, in a small group of people, the children are born uh, with blindness because of uh, uh, diseases in cornea. Mm. That does require surgery, which is a little bit more involved, but this is, this is the way it can be helped. But these surgeries are so expensive. Uh, that is true. Uh, they are expensive, and yet they can be managed. If I may give you an example, in Jamaica, uh, where we've been going for five years to do cataract surgeries, we operated on a young girl who was blind from birth at the age of four years in one eye, Two years later in the second eye, she can not only see, she's going to school now and working and, and uh, learning, etc. And we see her every time we go, it's just our pleasure. So they are expensive and yet mm -hmm. we can be managed. So the people who are doing cataract surgeries with the Rotary Club, they can probably help some of these uh, mm -hmm. younger children also. Uh, moving on to your question of uh, medical. We, as a part of Anikhan Community Center from Los Angeles, which is our organization, I'm a founding president, Dr. Uday Shah is a member, and we've got a lot of other members. We've gone to 13 countries and doing missions in different parts of the world. Our motto is to go and help whosoever is looking for help. We set up as many services as possible. Cataracts are relatively easy and common that many hospitals do. Dental care is also there in most of the places, but the medical is huge and relatively, very simply we can do that. Like here, we set the, set the whole thing up in a hotel. And uh, we were in the conference room uh, in the hotel looking at that and giving eyeglasses. And that's another thing about cataracts. To give eyeglasses for reading is so easy to do. And in four days, we gave away almost 500. And in other places, we have given over 1,000 in the same amount of time. So all it takes is a machine which costs about six, 7,000 US dollars, which, of course, we brought here to use. And the eyeglasses, and we brought 1,000 pair of eyeglasses from America, and we're going to leave remaining ones with the Rotary Club to use in the future. Finally, uh, I mean, before that, the medical part, the challenge is, Diabetes and high blood pressure are so common in yes, people. Yes, I agree. And they are relatively, it won't even take five minutes to diagnose them, but you need professionals. You need to set up the shop and advertise and people to come there. And we saw 1,039 people in four days. Yes. So, and we had to turn some people away because wow. there, was enough, there wasn't enough time. But yes. these two are common problems all over the world that I can literally say. Even are you in done America. with it now? Are you done with the medical um, movement? We, we, we finished our oh. mission yesterday. We are done. Uh, but we are hoping that next time when we do it, hopefully we'll be able to go on live before Please, so that more people to. can come and tip. And lastly, which is the most difficult part, and that is surgery. There are certain outpatient-based surgeries like hernias, hydrocils, circumcisions, even hysterectomy, which are not that easy and yet not that difficult. 
And we did 46 of those in four days, but we have done more. Last year, we did 121 in Europe surgeries in five days. So these are very, very important life-saving things. Say, for example, if somebody has a hernia, and if that gets obstructed, somebody can lose their life because of the complications of it. So fixing that, and it doesn't take that long. Mm -hmm. But it certainly, you need to have surgical colleagues, you need to have anesthesia, and you need to be able to establish. Thank you very much. Well, time will be our friend of the show. We have to go. Thank you so much. Very highly commendable thing. One of the different side will do Nigeria, and we can't wait to have you again next year. And hopefully, when you come next year, you will come to the show first. Come here and let the people know so they can benefit from it. Thank you. Are you brothers? Because I know you did. Kind of. Oh, kind of. Oh, really? Shai is a common. Shai is a common. Oh, nice. So, what do you like? This is your first time in Nigeria. Correct. What's your what do you like the most about Nigeria? Either people, the food or the people? People are so nice. Oh. People are so nice and lovely. Nice. Thank you very much once again for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.